Hello friends, so today we are going to discuss about neck pain. It is one of the common problems with which patients consult me in the OPD and uh, today's lifestyle and the work culture has really made it a pain in the neck for many professionals and many people. So uh, if you look at the causes, common causes of neck pain, of course it can start because of some issues in the neck, so in that one can have cervical muscle spasm, something called as text neck syndrome and the third one is cervicogenic headache and also cervical uh, disc prolapse. So let's look at uh, each of them one by one. So spasm as you know many of you may have noticed that when you get up sometimes in the morning after a good sleep there could be pain and spasm and the neck movements are painful. Usually that is short lasting one or two days and three days of uh, treatment with muscle relaxation or some simple analgesics uh, relieves them. So, but if the same thing is prolonged, you know, doesn't recover in a few days, you need to consult a doctor to find out the underlying cause because it could be also because of the pinched nerve in the neck or sometimes underlying infections or any kind of injury. So those things need to be ruled out. The second thing which we commonly see or hear is the text neck syndrome where everybody has a phone in the hand, mobile phone and they keep looking down. So our normal posture of the neck is like it should be held straight and a slight extension. So this uh, flexion or the forward movement of the neck is not a usual uh, posture for us. So if it is done for few minutes or you know shorter duration, there is no problem. But many people use mobile phones for long duration and that results in the prolonged flexion of the neck and that can cause pain in the neck usually one side and any kind of neck movements also become painful. And as you can understand, uh, the treatment is simple minimize the duration of usage of mobile phones and also go for uh, neck muscle exercises. And the third thing we commonly see is uh, what is called as a slip disc in the neck. So there are vertebral columns in the vertebral bodies are their bones. Between the bones there is a soft tissue called disc and on either side we have nerves coming out. So uh, there will be nerves on left side and right side. So sometimes the disc uh, degenerates that normally happens with aging. But also it can happen because of prolonged sitting, lack of neck exercises and sometimes genetic predisposition, uh, vitamin D deficiency. So many underlying factors are there which can cause or sometimes sports injuries which can cause uh, disc to bulge out. The disc can bulge out and press the nerves on the one side and sometimes both sides. So the symptoms along with the pain in the neck, there could be pain which radiates to the shoulder or also the interscapular area. And depending on the nerve which is compressed, it the pain can radiate to the arm, forearm and also the fingertips. So when somebody has pain in the neck along with pain radiating from the neck to the shoulder, arms, forearms or the fingers and also sometimes tingling, numbness in the hands and mild weakness. So these could mean that there is a pinched nerve in the neck due to slip disc and as you can understand the diagnosis can be made based on so depending on the severity of uh, slip disc, the uh, treatment can be medical which is along with the medications and the physical therapy where IFT ultrasound can be done for relief of pain and uh, isometric neck exercises for, to, for strengthening the neck muscles. And if the disc prolapse is severe with severe pain, then some patients about say 10% or lesser may require surgery also. In between sometimes epidural injections also can be given for pain relief. The next condition we discuss is a cervicogenic headache and as the name suggests the pain starts in the neck and it then uh, it can radiate to the head which is in the back of the head and also it can come to temple and the front. So the main thing is the pain starts in the neck and then comes to the head. So that is cervicogenic headache which can get confused with uh, migraines because migraines also can cause headache and the neck pain. But other features which we find in migraine like nausea, vomiting, or intolerance to light and noise. So those things are missing in cervicogenic headache and also the pain is more of pressing type, not the throbbing type which uh, people with migraine usually complain. So cervicogenic headache usually they don't respond to triptans or the other anti-migraine drugs but they respond to again physical therapy and simple uh, pain relief medications. So, so as we have discussed that you know neck pain can be because of many issues and uh, once somebody gets neck pain then we need to consult a doctor and find out the root cause and go for the appropriate treatment but it is always better to prevent the neck pain so how we can do it is number one is that 
the neck needs to move so some kind of isometric neck exercises should be done on daily basis second is we all have to you know use mobile phones smartphones or laptops and computers for long hours so say every 20 minutes take a few 20 seconds break and look around in different directions do some stretching movements if possible get up you know after 30 40 minutes for 1 to 2 minutes and move around while you're on the desk that also will help and uh, and also definitely you know for text neck we don't have to uh, make a habit of looking at mobile phone screen for uh, for hours together in a flexed posture so with these are simple and also the positioning of your laptop it should be kept in a straight line in front of the eyes where uh, you don't need to bend or you know extend your head upwards to look at the screen so those simple measures can help us and uh, you know as always prevention is better than cure so i'm sure you learned something new today and if you have any comments and queries please post them i'll be happy to answer and also subscribe to the channel to watch more educative videos in the future thank you